Dearest viewer, the end of the social season is nearly upon us. As the summer days turn shorter and colder, we will soon retreat to the comfort of our homes, where we will settle around the hearth to celebrate late year festivities, reminisce, and be disappointed by another overhyped Star Wars game. The more fortunate among us, having succeeded in their mid-year courtship rituals, will do so with a newfound love match. But for the rest of us, the next lonely winter draws ever closer. I myself was once among the happily coupled until my wife left me for a fictional undead half-elf. Somehow, I have zero game when it comes to games. Whenever I play through an RPG with romance options, I inexplicably end up alone or with the worst possible ending. I've played the newest Baldur's Gate three times and only managed to get with someone when role-playing as my himbo alter ego, Rodriguez El Cazorro. Everyone's really into Rodriguez. But when I play as myself, I am consistently a tragic loner who waits far too long to make a move and sacrifices love for the greater good. So basically, I'm soulless from Dragon Age. My first conclusion was obviously that all of these games must be broken, but now I think I see the common denominator. It's that I cannot be properly simulated. In real life, I'm obviously a catch, but when separated from my natural charisma by the barriers of fiction, I must rely purely on skill. And in this particular field, I am lacking. This will not do. I need to successfully court someone on par with the debaucherous vampire who stole my wife, and I need to do it quickly because I need to make her jealous. And also I ran out of time uh, to make a normal writing video this week, so I'm doing this one instead because I had these notes laying around from a Valentine's Day thing that I never finished. Thankfully, there are dozens of games full of potential matches, and I think, with some analysis, I can find the perfect romanceable video game character. Someone with high universal appeal, but also low enough standards that I can't miss. It's time for... The Diamond Block of the Season, a gamer's guide to finding love. I also recently watched all of Bridgerton. Hence the... This whole thing. I'm layering a lot of references. Great show, though. Peak historical romance. Does basically everything right, at least up until the third season, and then it kind of tanks because of some new head writer using AI or something. But the rest of it... Beautiful. It's like that Pride and Prejudice hand shot got picked up for three seasons. Should I just talk about Bridgerton? No, I'm in too deep. For much of human history, relationships were largely transactional. The upper class chose their husbands, wives, lizards, or entirely feminine, genderless, blue life partners based on social status and material benefits. There was a cost-value ratio at play. And games can simulate this dynamic with perfect accuracy, allowing you to purchase love with gifts and deeds, a dowry of sorts. Games teach us that gaining another's affection can be as simple as silently handing them their favorite object once a day until they eventually repay you with combat bonuses, just like in Victorian England. The reason I didn't end up making this video months ago is actually because I just got completely overwhelmed by the sheer volume of options. So revisiting the script now, I have narrowed down our prospects significantly. I was already not including actual dating simulators. There's a lot, and most are not worth mentioning. Plus, they're usually focused on the singular activity of finding love with all distractions removed, which feels inauthentic. Action-adventure or survival games that include romanceable characters more accurately simulate the need to balance your relationships with day-to-day -day activities, like running a farm or commanding a stealth military starship. I then realized I don't even need to include every game with romance options because only some of those games are well-known and nobody wants to marry a commoner. So I've narrowed down our results even further to the most popular results when I do a very basic Google search. Japan is not invited. I just, there's too many of them. I was gonna include Harvest Moon, later republished A Story of Seasons, because I remember playing one on the GameCube and thought, well, there's, just, there's only six options in that game. The whole series probably wouldn't be too daunting. And then I found out how many there actually are. Don't even get me started on Fire Emblem. I was also gonna include Persona, but then I remembered that they're high schoolers, and I decided not to. On top of that, JRPG romance options are all just repetitive tropes of, like, the same six to twelve archetypes anyway, so it's Western Hemisphere only, okay? That leaves us with Stardew Valley, Baldur's Gate 3, Mass Effect, Fallout 4, Dragon Age, Cyberpunk 2077, Divinity Original Sin 2, and... Skyrim, I guess. They're old money. They fund the parties to stay relevant, but everyone just tries to ignore them. To create a usable ranking, I need to compare a lot of very subjective qualities. First, how easy are they to get? How much time do I have to invest? How expensive is their taste in gifts? Do I need to commit crimes? And if so, are we talking misdemeanors or war treaty violations? Second, how worth the effort are they? We have to consider material benefits, gameplay bonuses. Plus, for most of these games, popular opinion has already determined a natural hierarchy and social station is important, so that matters. But what are they basing it on? Some of these relationships require hours of cultivation for any form of payoff. If the benefits were purely material, then why would anyone pick this guy? I already know he's high maintenance. At best, you have to play an anti-hero just to get his attention, and then he gives you a debuff. 
Yet he's clearly incredibly popular. So what's the missing piece? White hair, maybe. Let's check Bridgerton again. In season two, Anthony is the guy everybody wants. That makes some sense. He's from a reputable family. He's well-connected. He manages money well. But he also has a ton of baggage. And yet Kate is all over him, even though he's engaged to her sister, and the social damage to both of them would be devastating. So what could possibly be the reason? Oh, right. He's hot. Forgot that part. All right, I think we have two pretty clear axes, and that's great, because it means we're doing a graph. I printed stuff out to save time on editing. I understand that that makes me even closer to just doing Unraveled, but I don't care. Am I just gonna keep wearing this for the whole video? I present the graph. In this corner, we've got low cost, low appeal. Anyone down here has very little to offer, but they're self-aware and they don't make demands. If you find yourself still single come the end of the season, they'll be waiting. Over here, we have probably the worst category, uh, high cost, low appeal. They're straight up burdens with terrible personalities, and you'll still never be able to impress them enough. Then there's high cost, high appeal, the cream of the crop. They're worth it, they know it, and they won't accept anything less. We don't want them either. The economically best option, low cost, high appeal. Being with them will raise your own status, and no outside observer will ever know just how low their bar was. This is what we're aiming for. Let's go ahead and get Skyrim out of the way. There's already too many options, so I've reduced it down to landowners only. Physically, I think I could score most of them. I'll just say, well, I'm probably like a six on the internet. I think I'm easily a Skyrim nine. All potential spouses give the same benefits. They let you move in. They'll cook for you once a day. They'll hold your stuff while you go murder a village. So baseline, they're all gonna start around the center which I have labeled boring. To marry anyone in Skyrim, you need to obtain an amulet of Mara, which costs like 200 gold, basically a marriage license. Airy and Gilfrey just want you to chop firewood for them and they're yours, I could do that. Watch this. Ha <laughs> ha! Thorex, Silgia, Isolde, Balamund, and Avrusa, all just basically blue collar workers. They just want you to deliver things to them and for them. Quintus is an alchemist. Tari, a tailor. Orgak, the Steelheart uh, is being married off to somebody she doesn't love. You can pay her dowry or just be a friend and tell her not to do that. Anathok and Pavo uh, both need you to liberate their minds and getting involved in union conflicts just seems like a really high bar to date either of these guys, so I'm gonna pass. Siljar, I'd have to kill a bunch of spiders for him and I don't want to. I don't like I don't like the way you look. I don't like that guy. Revan and Romlin each want me to commit petty theft because they can't be bothered to do it themselves, and that's not a pattern that changes after you get together with someone. Camilla Valerius, maybe one of the better looking Skyrim NPCs, if that scale even applies. But she's already involved in a love triangle and she wants you to do the whole golden claw quest. So I will not be attempting that for this uh, unavailable convenience store clerk. Muri, an apothecary. She's looking for someone willing to commit a couple murders. Mule, the lioness. She seems awesome, but I'd have to retrieve her favorite sword from ancient Dwemer ruins. And I'm just, I'm looking for somebody who's more easily impressed. Hat is hurting my head. And that leaves us with the only person worth anything in Skyrim, which is Uthgird the Unbroken, a self-sufficient mercenary with her own townhome in Whiterun, who will instantly be your best friend if you beat her in a fist fight. I love Uthgird. I don't know if I could beat her up in real life, but I will always try. No one in Skyrim can go too high. They're barely characters. Right, next up, Stardew Valley. These are all pretty tame because they're just normal people, plain and simple folk. We got Alex, uh, just kind of a guy. Elliot, poet, great head of hair, objectively attractive, but also uh, has expensive tastes and he lives in a shack. Harvey, I think we'd be a pretty even match. He's the local doctor, a fitness buff, and he's easily impressed by basic foraging. I think he may take the lead. Sam's a real you get what you pay for. He can be won over with pizza and soda and unsurprisingly, there's not much more to him than that. Sebastian is a fan favorite emo boy, but he plays hard to get and we don't have time for that. His return gifts also tend to be coffee and bat wings. Thanks, man. Shane, certainly affordable, but his room is gross and he's rude. To be fair, he's massively depressed and gets better as the game goes on, but we're not here to be fair. We're here to judge people's surface level value, and this guy, the surface level sucks. Abigail, one of the easier options because quartz is her favorite rock. It's easy to get. The downside is she eats them. Also really popular. People think the rock eating thing is cute. So Emily, she gives back what she gets. Haley doesn't have incredibly high standards in practice, but you wouldn't know it from talking to her. She just costs you a bunch of cake and flowers and self-esteem issues, and in exchange, she's very rude to you. Leia, easy to find, easy to win over, doesn't give back a whole lot materially, but she is the fan favorite. Maru, pretty hard to get, mostly because her favorite items are machine parts, but she's got a great personality and she comes with a robot. Penny is boring and goes in the middle. This is Krobus. He's not on my list, but I'm gonna put him on the board anyway. Cyberpunk 2077. These all end up inherently a little higher on the difficulty score because I think they all expect me to be a little more violent. Judy Alvarez, she's a highly skilled computer technician and has a very strong 
sense of justice that she will not hesitate to speak up about, which happens to be my type, but she is way too cool for anyone, me especially. Pan Am Palmer, she's a nomad, good with cars, uh, but also kind of a bridge burner and not really liked by anyone and still out of my league. Next we got River, he's a cop. Harry Eurodyne, literally a rock star, so I'm guessing no. Maybe he'd let me carry his stuff. Fallout 4, another limited one. We really only have two options here. Um, and I don't remember if I excluded the other options because there weren't any or if they were just all truly horrifying. Because of the two I did include, we have Kate, a post-apocalyptic cage fighter, with honestly way more trauma than even a wandering murder hobo can handle. To win her over effectively, I'd basically have to turn into a nudist alcoholic asshole, and at that point, I think Asterion just wins. And then there's Preston. Look at that face. He's got a great combat buff, and he's a good housekeeper. Plus, easy enough to win over just by doing Minutemen stuff. I think I could get him. We'd build cool forts together. Baldur's Gate. Shadowheart, uh, she's like your rebellious Christian girlfriend. She's about as useful as your average D&D cleric, which is to say not really, but even when I reclassed her, she could barely hit anything, so maybe it's just her. She likes it when you're nice to people and choose to not die, and it also helps if you don't tell her that her god is evil. Will, super cool warlock swordsman at first glance. He does have a laser beam that pushes people off of cliffs. His reputation a far exceeds his personality, which in our case actually is fine. Gale, smart, Talented, awkwardly charming, uh, but really rides the ick line for me sometimes. The only measurably expensive companion because he has to eat your boots or he will explode and destroy the world. He's pretty open to love. He's also real hung up on his ex, uh, who is a god, and that is too much baggage. Lazel comes off harsh up front, but actually has a pretty endearing soft side. Plus, she's one of the best fighters of the group. I'm just not sure she'd go for me because she's into warrior types. Pretty sure I finished that Spider-Man video by saying I would run away in somebody else's car. Carlock is the best and I don't deserve her. Halson, uh, dude gives it up for free, but I'm not into bears. Also gets kidnapped a lot. Minthara, stunning, confident, hilarious, but she may be the most expensive option in this entire video uh, because she won't get with me unless I do a genocide. She also hangs out with a bunch of stinky goblins. Mass Effect I've never played, but Ian's a big fan, and he caught me up on everybody, so thanks to Ian. Garrus starts off as a cop. He very quickly decides to take the law into his own hands, and then becomes the loosest canon anyone's ever seen. Ashley Williams, uh, kind of a space racist. Caden starts off as kind of a dick, but uh, he explodes pretty quickly, so it's kind of a short-lived thing. What do you mean it depends? He explodes. Liara is a scientist, a scholar. She speaks excellent space Latin and she uses prepositions correctly. Sure, she may be from a race commonly regarded as promiscuous psychics with a bit of a debaucherous side, but something about downsides? I don't know. Miranda Lawson is genetically engineered to be as beautiful as possible and the daughter of one of the richest, most well-connected men in all the galaxy. Basically the entire package, except that he is also trying to kill her and anybody associated with her. So I, I think that's worth it. Talia, daughter of a high-ranking fleet admiral, uh, and also 17? I just removed an entire game for that. I mean, she's probably older in the later games, so I guess, no, I'm not gonna make that argument. Jack is an escaped uh, biotic super criminal, so very low social standing, and then she reforms into a teacher, so her social standing goes down. Jacob couldn't hack it in the military. He's a human supremacist. He cheats on you. Uh, and he has daddy issues, and not the fun kind. Thane is an underworld assassin. There's a lot of criminals in Mass Effect. He has a lot of baggage and a bug face, but he looks good in leather. Kelly Chambers, who has not been on the board this whole time, shut up. She's a high-ranking military therapist with incredibly deep emotional understanding, but more importantly, she will feed your fish. She looks pretty chill. I don't know, I could... We could get coffee. Feeling more confident than earlier. Samara is extremely socially respected, kind of like a high-ranking space knight. Possibly the best social match on this entire list. Unfortunately, she is hell-bent on a revenge mission, and there is no room in her pants for anything but justice. Ian wrote that one. Morinth is Samara's daughter and into edgy art and social rebellion. Seems great. Apparently I have to kill her mom. Samantha, funny, pretty, basically Kelly Chambers in terms of social position, but she won't feed your fish. Diana is a trashy tabloid reporter, and if I've learned anything from Bridgerton, it's that that's exactly who you want on your side. James just seems like a traumatized war hero. Sure he's fine, but I'll probably just leave him alone. On to Divinity 2, which I also haven't played, but it's mechanically similar to Baldur's Gate. The Red Prince is royalty, big points, but also he's gonna have all the power in that relationship. Plus he's into someone else. I could probably get him if I just like promised to be a slave. He can also dig holes without a shovel. I don't know why that's on his resume, but I'm gonna give him a point for it. Thane is lovely when you get to know him. I think we'd be buddies, uh, but everybody hates him. It's not his fault. He's just dead. Beast is a cliche fantasy dwarf and gets lost in the crowd. Los, I hope I'm pronouncing any of these right, a girl of many talents, singing, art, powerful enchantment spells. Overall a catch, though she is occasionally possessed by a demon that I might have to fight 
or sacrifice innocence for, but I don't know, I think I could fix her. Ifen, hot older guy with a checkered past who's learned from his mistakes. He just kind of looks like he'd be disappointed in me if I tried to hit on him. Sabeel, loyal, trustworthy, vengeful toward lizards, but I'd have to kill the Shadow Prince. Finally, on to Dragon Age. I've never played a Dragon Age, and neither is Ian, so these are purely based on internet research and vibes. Everybody loves Alistair. He's a good old boy. He's heir to the throne of Ferelden. His reputation alone puts him at the top. Plus, he's incredibly easy. There's no real spice, which shouldn't matter, but I'm not sure he's gonna go over super well with Alicent. Liliana is pretty basic and super religious, and she creeps on you sometimes. And she's got weird vibes. Very easy. But eh. Morrigan is a fan favorite romance. She's a hot, spooky witch that can shapeshift into a dragon. She plays hard to get, but I think I could wear her down. Zevran tries to kill you first, and that's obviously hot. Assuming he decides not to, he falls super hard. High risk, but worth it. Anders is a terrorist, and he causes a war, and he's just kind of a tool. Fenris is the local edgy anime emo boy. He comes with tons of baggage, but in a hot way. And also, I know that Allison will be jealous of him. Isabella is a retired pirate. Seems fun, but not ready for a serious relationship. Meryl, I could barely find anything about on the internet, so she must not be interesting. Sebastian is a royal archer, so he's a hard worker with a good station, and he'll never put out. Blackwall, he has a complicated past, and we really just need something simple right now, you know? Cassandra is a warrior princess, uh, and really just wants pretty traditional romancing, so that one's a freebie. Cullen is a nice little soft boy with a drug addiction. He's very easy to impress. Dorian is good looking, funny, and a fan favorite, but I'm also all of those things and he's an attention hog. Iron Bull is very low effort. He's immediately down. Social standing is very low though, and uh, in order to advance the relationship, I would have to kill a dragon and then craft a necklace out of its teeth. Josephine is a wealthy ambassador, but she's engaged to another guy that I would have to duel. Sarah is incredibly fun, but she plays things too slow and we have a deadline. And finally, Solus, a highly intelligent and protective mage. TikTok sure likes him. Unfortunately, this one's doomed from the start, putting him on the max effort line. And with that, the board is complete. We've narrowed down the riffraff to 16 final contestants, which is better prospects than I anticipated. I'm pretty confident in my selection. Let me know what you think in the comments, as if I have to tell you that. I can already tell some of these are not going to uh, make her jealous, but I guess there's really only one way to find out. Basically, I'm gonna show you each of these people, okay. and then I need you to rank them twice okay. from one to 10. One, on how likely you think it is that I could get them. Oh, okay. And then the second one, how jealous you'd be if I did. Which which version of you are we, uh... This dapper Bridgerton-ass version right here, obviously. I think that's going to skew the scale. Well, j the best version, then. The okay, one that we right. the one... <laughs> this is, I think her name is Los. This is a woman. This is a woman. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get these people. Sorry. This is me. She's a witch. Uh, okay. Very talented. Just based off of this image and the limited information I've given you. Eight. Eight on my ability to get her. Yeah. I think you're kind of a type. Okay. And Ten. Ten, ten for your jealousy yeah, on this one? Oh my god. That's a front runner already. Okay, heard so we're, one. we're looking for- oh, I see, okay. okay. No, yeah, at the end I'm gonna figure out which one of these to go after so that I can make you leave Asterian. Well, hopefully not her. That's the point. <laughs> she's giving- she's giving equal to Asterian for sure. This next guy is the Red Prince. He looks very sought after in terms of hot lizard men. I do think he has a lot of confidence. This is not my type, unfortunately, but I think for people whose type this is, I don't think you could snag him. Two. How jealous would you be if I somehow managed to pull, pull him off? Really not very much. Here's one I'm pretty sure you know. This is Uthgird the Unbroken. I do, I know She's Uthgird. She's the only Skyrim character to have made it into this. I love her. She's is my that... favorite companion in the game. She's one with the accent. Zero. I think she would not be. Zero? Her. Really? No. no, I don't think so. Zero? No. If I completely proved you wrong, would you be jealous? No. Okay. <laughs> Two. You can have her. <laughs> this guy's from Fallout 4. His name's Preston Garvey. Community man. Uh, uh -huh. He helps you build all your settlements and stuff. He seems boring as hell. I think you could do it. Thank you. I think like I said I think it. I could too. Not for me, you know? This is Diana. TV personality from space. Zero. Zero? You don't have a chance. I actually think she'd hate you. <laughs> So... Well, I think I'd hate her, and maybe that would be Negative part one? of the comedy. Is it, do, should I even... Okay. Yeah, I'd be so jealous. You'd be, this is Liara. She's the, um... Yeah. She's actually just incredibly accomplished. She's, like, a scientist she's so and, like... Five. Five on me getting... Chance. Okay. She seems nice. She seems like she'd give you a chance. You're really Liara. funny. That can I go a long am. way with the right people. <laughs> How jealous would you be of Liara? Ten. Ten? Look at her. All yeah, right. She's incredible. Last one from Mass Effect. This is Garrus. That's He's, a... 
bug. Are you showing me a list of people that are highly sought after? I did include that as criteria. Okay, then I have because... assumptions. I think he probably has an incredible voice. He does. I mean, He's in the first game and wasn't romanceable, and they made him romanceable later. I think because people loved liked him, him so much. much. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, hey, rebel dude ever. Hey, I think you have a serious chance with an ex-cop. All right. Would you be jealous of Karis? Yeah. yeah. Ten. <laughs> I have a feeling in the pit I of my stomach. I thought for some reason you were going to be far pick here. Okay. You're just so easy to win over. Well... <laughs> what if they're funny? <laughs> so we got Emily. She works at the bar. She uh -huh. likes gemstones. Uh -huh. I think that's about all there is to say. Okay, I think you have a 10 out of 10 chance of getting Emily. Uh, this is who I feel like I'm competing with in real life when we go out. <laughs> These are the waitresses that are paying attention to you. Yeah, okay. These the are the ones girls that I don't that notice. Looking at you go for it. You guys can have each other. I don't want you and Asterion talking about me behind my back about it. No, that's no, not. We'd be laughing. <laughs> Next up, we have Abigail. Yeah. Uh, who I thought was the, the most romance character in the game, but is not. She eats uh, rocks. She does eat rocks. She's a quirky gamer girl. She's just the quintessential. She's a quirky gamer girl. Pretty, dyes her hair, plays video games, <laughs> oh, likes being alone. Okay, so 10. I think you have a really good chance with, with people like this. All right. You are the fluffy brown haired b golden retriever boy. Would you be jealous if I dated Abigail? I would actually. I think she's probably like real life super hot. Like not me, but like adjacent to me, like in the range of me types. Right, okay. Which makes it way worse. That would. Could you imagine if I left you for Drew, Drew Gooden? Gooden? I don't, yeah. yeah. What's the black guy? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So next one, Harvey, <laughs> who is me. You're way better your than sword. Harvey. You think he's a doctor? Yeah. That's really. That's all he's got going. I think you'd struggle a little. I think he's. I think he's a bit pickier than the other two. Okay. Or at least you're less in his like type. Five. How jealous of Harvey would you be? Five. No, oh, I like Robin. This is not Robin. Five. This is Leia. No. Leia is the actual most romance character in the game. Kind of inoffensive, like in a shadow heart way. I thought she was. In real life, she's a lesbian, but in the game, you can be either gender, and I don't think it matters. Which kind of just makes her like like a Hallmark movie protagonist. Ten. If anyone, if, okay. if she's really bagging everybody, you're better than most. Yeah. So I'm I'll, sure you have a chance. Would you be jealous? Five. Five. I gave Harvey a five. I feel like I'd five. be as jealous. Sebastian is a royal archer, and he's also celibate or something. I actually think you could bag him. I feel like you've got some. Twink. No, yeah, absolutely. Ten. I mean, yeah, if you could break the celibacy, like, okay. that would make me pretty jealous. Alistair. Oh, he's I see. the favorite okay. across all of the games. Obviously kind of a hunk, but I also know he's very not your type, so... He's certainly not. In the game, you can only win him over if you're playing a female character. Four in a wig. Would you're you be jealous boy. of me if I were dating him? If you were at a function, you're a little Are half Are you still elf. in the wig? I guess so, because he took me to the ball or whatever. Okay, like a seven. Yeah, okay. This is uh, Cassandra Pentagast. <laughs> she is a, a warrior princess. She's just got pretty traditional, like, expectations. So, like, you take her on fancy dates and buy her flowers and stuff. She just wants to be romanced. Um, then two. You're not good at the romance. I think you actually might be right. I put I her on like, the easy category. I feel like you could, okay, I feel like... You could maybe be exactly her type. I think you were right to begin with. The more I think about it now, I did just spend an entire video um, ranking people based on uh, numerical values and forgot that people like people when they're hot. So two then. But if I pulled it off, ten. how jealous? Ten. Yeah, yeah. A big ten. I would probably actively attempt to take her from you. <laughs> this is Cullen. How deep is his voice? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. He is addicted to drugs. He needs help. We like painkillers or like meth? I, Where are we at? I feel like it's more toward skooma? the myth. Like it's on the skooma in. Six. Jealousy levels. Four. Okay. <laughs> How much of his personality is drugs? A My... lot of his story arc is based around the, the drug addiction. But does he overcome by the power of love? I think he does. I put him in the list mostly for you. This is Fenris. Yeah, this is Dragon Age Asterion. Is that what I'm looking at here? He is just the white-haired, cool anime guy in the show. He's edgy. He's dark. He needs someone to love. You think I could fix him? No. Yes, I think... No, well, I, I don't think he'd let you. Four. <laughs> I don't see right. the, I don't see the vibes clicking. But would he make you jealous? Yeah. Couple more here. We got Morgan. She oh, is no. a witch, I think. Oh, 10. For yeah. my chances? Yeah, I think you're totally your type. How jealous would Ten. you be? I think she's the first her. perfect score. No way. Change her to a nine. I actually don't think I'd be the most jealous of her on everyone on the list. I actually think she's probably very similar in personality to you. I don't know how that so skews it. Bad. And finally we got Zevran. What face is that? I know this face. What Doesn't he? Doing? Oh, he looks like Flynn Ryder. Oh my god, yes, that's he's doing who it the is. smolder. He is. It's the Flynn it's Rider Flynn smolder. Rider, that's what it is. He's also an assassin that gets sent to kill you and you <gasps> stop him. He's who I'd romance. Two parts. Mm -hmm. Would I survive the assassination attempt and then could I win him over afterwards? Yeah, you absolutely would. And also, yeah, I think you have a really good <laughs> chance, actually. I think you'd have like an eight chance to win him over. That's amazing. You're so much more confident in me than I am. I'm a pretty 
jealous. He's really cute. If I showed up with this guy. And he's an assassin. He is an assassin. And he doesn't kill you just to fall in love with you. Right. I mean, that's ten, pretty hysterian right there. Ten, just, it's a 10. Let me just tally up the totals and see what the results are. Okay, so here's the scenario, right? We're at a friend's apartment. Okay. You're with Asterion. We've been broken up for a while, mm -hmm. and I walk in with my new partner, Morgan the Witch from Dragon Age. Dragon Age, or Abigail from Stardew Valley. They both got equal scores based on uh, your rankings. Yeah, but Abigail is like my insecurity pick. What do you do? Well, I kill Abigail. You get back together with me? Oh, like would I leave Asterion? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to win you back! <laughs> I'm trying to get you away from the hot vampire oh. man by picking someone even hotter that makes you want me. I think we could all be happy together. <laughs> if you didn't pick Abigail, I think the four of us could have a good old time. So it's Morgan then. It's like Morgan's the winner. my high school trauma. I feel like if you snagged Morgan, I would suddenly look at you a little differently like, oh. Okay. You actually just don't have to do this. You could just sort of embrace a little bit of vampire or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just become a vampire myself. That's it. That's what will do it. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you for watching this ridiculous video. I was a little late with this one. I'm hoping to have a long form video out every other Wednesday. If you liked this kind of video, let me know. I'm still kind of like playing with formats and stuff and just kind of doing what I enjoy. But I am going to go back to the writing videos. I got this new idea recently. Uh, I'm putting like mid-roll ads in these and also trying to look for actual sponsors. But it's hard to find them. I just kind of have to dig through emails that people send me. And we have a very big community of uh, lots of creative people doing cool things. So I thought, why not advertise for you guys? I posted about this on Patreon already, which by the way, patreon.com slash doormonster if you're enjoying these videos. But basically, if you'd like me to advertise something that you're working on, it can be a YouTube channel, a webcomic, an abstract concept, a video shout out message to your friend, I don't care. Send me an email to doormonstertv at gmail.com or on the Patreon DMs. Give me a pitch, sort of just like a pay what you can kind of thing. A couple hundred bucks? Or like 50 in a Steam game? I don't know. Just tell me what you're thinking. We could probably work something out. I just think it'd be more fun to like advertise a couple of people per video and not put mid-roll ads up or something like that. And in general, I'll tend to prioritize patrons more. So if you want to get to me faster, patreon.com slash doormonster. You can also help me sleep and earn the Kyle sleep stream with everybody once we hit $4,000 a month. Thank you to everybody who has donated, like all these people. And now, editing. I'm not sleeping. There's gonna be so much footage to cut out of me sticking tape on the back of these squares. In a wig, you could conceive anybody. I think, yeah. Can... What? What did you mean to say? What did I say?